So yes, it is once again that time of year where chestnuts are roasting on an open fire and RuPaul is nipping at your nose. But another Christmas just means that there's another shitty RuPaul Christmas product that I can make fun of. Last year we did the Holoslay Spectacular, but I thought this year, why not review something that is just as bad, but had like three times the budget. The Bitch Who Stole Christmas was RuPaul's 2021 holiday film. I can't even say that the reputation for this film precedes it because from what I've seen, it doesn't have much of a reputation at all. There are a total of two critic reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. It has the smallest Wikipedia page I've ever seen and a Metacritic page for it doesn't even exist. So what is this movie? And what went wrong that it went virtually unnoticed by not only film critics, but also by the Drag Race fandom at large? That is what we are going to find out here today. Hey, you should totally subscribe to my channel. I make lots of cool stuff, just like this video that you're watching now. And I've made this and I've made this. Uh, and you can uh, totally subscribe and then I'll make more and then it's 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 actually a really cool thing if you subscribe I'll make more and like that's a really cool relationship that we can have so you should better fucking do it so the movie starts out like every great holiday film does with Michelle Visage sitting in a little wooden cabin sipping on wine. Sipping on a brand sponsored cocktail. Well, excuse me, it's a brand sponsored cocktail apparently. Even though nowhere in the scene is there a brand, it's almost like they had written that into the script assuming that a brand would want to associate with this film and then no brand actually did. So then Michelle tells us that she wants to read us one of her favorite holiday stories called The Bitch Who Stole Christmas. So then we pan into the book and we get a title card. Oops, wrong show. So then we get introduced to our main character of this film, which is Olivia. And Olivia is a stereotypical, hardworking office girly who hates Christmas. Very original. <laughs> so Olivia confides in her gay best friend Tristan, played by Gottmik from season 13. And she tells him that she'd do anything to get promoted to the senior role of executive fashion lady boss in chief. Oh, so gay. I love it. Okay, homophobia. I can get into this. <laughs> so then we had the inciting incident of the film, which is when Hannah Contour, played by RuPaul, calls our main character Olivia into her office. So in order to get a hit story, Hannah Contour tells Olivia to go sneak undercover into a town called Tuckahoe, which is like a little Christmas obsessed town. And she wants Olivia to expose Tuckahoe and find out their dirty secrets so she can have like a, a good town gone bad story. It's it's a very far-fetched reasoning. We have to like not question the logic of things. You just kind of have to nod your head and be like, yeah, sure. Now let's address the elephant in the room. You may have noticed that some of these shots containing RuPaul look like ass. And that is because it is pretty much confirmed just from the production quality that RuPaul filmed most of this film in front of a green screen and then was like put in after the fact. So if you pay attention throughout the film, it's always RuPaul on her own and then everyone else in the scene is over here. It's RuPaul over here, everyone else over here. And that's because she shot all of her scenes uh, separately. I don't know. Anyway, it's really distracting. Hannah then gets back to her plan and she tells Olivia that not only does she want Olivia to write like a smear campaign about the town, but she also wants her to steal the winter crown, which is a crown that's given to the winner of the annual winter ball that the town holds. So you may be asking why RuPaul wants to steal this crown given that they work at a magazine company? Like why would they need a crown? I want it on the cover, Olivia, of the annual Christmas issue. But if I was Olivia and I heard that, I would be like, why do we have to steal the crown? Like why are we stealing the crown to take a photo of it? These are questions that Olivia should be asking. She does not ask any of these. She just blindly accepts RuPaul's requests and she sets out on her journey uh, to commit a crime for her boss. So Olivia gets undercover to go to Tuckahoe. Goodbye, Olivia St. Lapel. Hello, Maggie Z. I don't know why, because it's not like she's been to Tuckahoe before. It's not like anyone knows her. So why is she going undercover when no one knows who the fuck she is anyway? I don't know. We're just gonna go with it. It's like a little Hannah Montana little transformation. She just puts on a little wig and, and calls it a day. So now we're in the town of Tuckahoe and if you can look past all the CGI snow getting in your way, we have a lovely little Christmas town uh, where everyone is in the Christmas spirit all the time. So Maggie Zine steps right out into the town and is immediately greeted by Oscar award winning actress Raven. Really not from around here, are you? I see Raven's acting skills are just as good as the last time we saw them. Welcome to another. Oh, shit. And then a song and dance number just happens out of nowhere. 
Um, and there's basically every single Rue Girl cameo that you could ever imagine in this song. Coming into this film, I knew nothing. So when this scene started happening, I just assumed that like, oh, the film is a musical. I didn't know that. But then I kept watching and never in the entirety of the film again, do the characters just break out into song and dance out of nowhere? So I guess it's not a musical, it just has one musical scene and then they just drop the idea of the musical altogether. <laughs> so after the song and dance number, we are introduced to Mayor Kunt, the mayor of Tuckahoe, and she explains that this winter ball is a week-long competition in which different streets in the town compete against each other to prove who has the most holiday spirit. So then we find out that Delia Von White Woman's group, Kitten Heel Court, has won the last 11 winter balls. The last 11 winter balls. So Naomi, what qualities do you think you have to have to be the winner of the winter ball in town Tuckahoe? Um, blonde and white? I'm just kidding. <laughs> so Delia Von White Woman reluctantly hands back the crown, and the crown is quickly escorted off by the mayor's security guard. So Olivia, on her undercover mission, decides to follow where they're taking the crown so she can steal it from them. But being the rom-com girly that Olivia is, she accidentally spills all her coffee over the hunky security guard. Oh my god, this is a travesty. She spilled her non-existent coffee on generic white man number two. With me being generic white man number one, obviously. <laughs> So to make sure that he doesn't burn from all that air that she spilled on him, he takes off his shirt. If you like this, you're in luck because he's gonna be doing this a lot throughout the film. Sorry, lesbians. So the security guard, whose name is Big Russ, tells his friend to go take the crown to the super secret location while he flirts with Olivia. But after, Olivia tells Big Russ that she can't go on a date with him because she's so busy with work. She decides to try and trek down the crown again by walking in the opposite direction to which it was taken in. Lost the scent of the crown. But did you really? Because the guy that Big Russ gave the crown to walks into this building right here and you even saw him do this. Look at you, you're looking. So why are you walking in the opposite direction? I'm not supposed to question anything. I forgot that I wasn't supposed to question anything. I will just nod and agree with Olivia. This is a great decision to walk in the opposite direction of your goal. Good job, girl boss queen, you're slaying. So Maggie Zine decides to head to the inn that she's staying at because she thinks it's the perfect place to chat to the locals, which I feel like is a strange reason. You literally have locals right behind you right this second. Why are you going to like a, a shitty little inn that you're staying at to try find locals when the locals are like in the main square? Like, why aren't you talking to the... <sighs> we don't ask questions. For God, I'm not asking questions. There's no questions here. I'm really happy. Great job, Maggie. Totally don't go ask those people right behind you. Go ask some fucking randomers in a place that is looks like shit. It looks like a fucking back alley. Yeah, you did such a great job of finding locals. Good job. So yeah, the local inn is in an alleyway. It looks like shit. And it's called the Tucked Inn. Do you get it? It's a, it's a pun. And puns are funny. Is, isn't it funny? Like tucked in, like you're going to bed? Tucked? And in this dark alleyway, she is greeted by everyone's favorite Russian hooker, Brooklyn Heights. <laughs> You're a whore. Oh, yeah, that's me. The name's Kitty. Did you think I meant Katya? Hey, you little dummy. No, she wasn't in this film, but Brooklyn Heights is. I think the writers probably thought they were also talking about Katya when they wrote this film, because this role is most definitely written for Katya. It is literally a bendy Russian hooker who has herpes named Kitty. And the funny thing about this is both Trixie and Katya know about it. I just watched the Christmas movie last night. I feel like there was a role for Trixie and a role for Katya just clearly written into this. <laughs> well, those are your words, not ours. Thank you for coming on the Bald and the Beautiful. Now we've addressed what role was written for Katya, but what role was written for Trixie? So it's never been confirmed. But it is pretty obvious if you think about it that James Mansfield's role was written for Trixie. Though I do want to say that I don't think that the Delia Von White Woman character is nearly as egregiously Trixie as the Russian hooker character is Katya. So Kitty brings Olivia inside the inn and just like I said, there are no locals. What a goddamn surprise. Olivia walks up to the reception desk and is greeted by... Oh my god, is that Tandy Amon Dupree? Oh no, it's just Ginger. Or Hazel Delashes, as her character is named. Hazel is initially skeptical of Olivia, assuming that she's a journalist from a nearby city, but Olivia is able to lie her way into the inn. Hazel brings Maggie to her room before we're whisked away to Delia Von White Woman's house, where she's giving this big evil speech about how when she wins this year's Winter Ball, she's gonna use that privilege as the Winter Ball winner to gentrify downtown Tuckahoe and destroy the tucked inn. Back over in downtown Tuckahoe, Olivia is walking through the inn's bar. She sits down and ends up getting caught in a conversation 
conversation with Jane McBeige, who is played by Jan from season 12. Now the whole shtick to the Jane character is that she's very subdued, forgettable, a plain Jane, if you will. And I find it ironic that they got Jan of all people to play the plain Jane character, considering that Jan's entire downfall across both of her seasons was that she was too peppy. So Olivia starts asking more questions about how she can get her hands on the winter crown. For fuck's sake, Olivia, you already had your hands on it. You had the perfect opportunity to steal it. Hazel then reads a letter that she received in the mail and it turns out to be a eviction notice. It turns out that business hasn't been going too well for the tucked in and that Hazel's inability to pay back her loan means that the inn is going to be bulldozed on Christmas Eve. So Olivia sees this moment as an opportunity to get her hands on the winter crown again. And Olivia suggests that they should form a team and compete in the winter ball because if they win downtown will be named the most Christmassy street in Tuckahoe and that means that Mayor Coon would refuse to tear down the street which was just named the winter ball winner so olivia under the guise of magazine hazel kitty jane and the local cab driver b decide to enter the winter ball together so now we have a beautiful three second long makeover scene and they make these lovely outfits for the opening night of the winter ball that's happening later that day except i lied because we never see them in these outfits ever again i don't know why the scene even existed it does absolutely nothing for the story so now we have the first night of the winter ball and hey isn't that creston carsley and matt rothews isn't that right creston carsley oh it sure is matt rothews knew it so the first challenge is a runway challenge where the group has to present a cohesive series of looks and whoever has the collection that the mayor enjoys the most will be chosen as the winner of that challenge by Mayor Kunt. So Delia Von White Woman's group, Kitten Hill Court, goes up before our main characters. Are you there? Look out, it's me, Pretty your baby sweet. mama. Very creative. So our group goes up next and they completely bomb the performance. So naturally the first win of the ball goes to Kitten Hill Court. Goddamn my favorites, Bussyton Boulevard didn't score. So after failing the performance, Olivia gets a call from Hannah Contour asking her where the crown is. And when Olivia reveals that she doesn't have the crown yet, Hannah Contour drops the bomb on the audience that Hannah Contour is actually Olivia's adoptive mother and she just found her on a street somewhere when she was a kid and she took her in, uh, which is an interesting twist for the story because that means that Olivia's mother is also her boss. Nepo baby. So the group is feeling down and sad on themselves because of flopping the first challenge of the winter ball and they're just about to give up before Olivia gives a speech where she tells the group that the reason that they failed is because they weren't being true to themselves and they were trying to replicate the success of Kitten Hill Court. And she suggests that they should try and embrace their own uniqueness as the town's sluts. We're sluts! Her words, not mine. <laughs> So it's the next night and we're back at the winter ball for night two. Wait, what? Apparently a time jump has happened because Kitten Hill Court has somehow won three challenges when they only had one before. Don't know how that happened. So for this challenge, the groups have to go head to head in like a pitch perfect sing off type of thing. But despite this edgier and more risky performance, Miss Mayor Kunt absolutely loves it and she decides to give them the win for the challenge. So that same night, Big Russ comes over to the inn and flirts with Olivia. Olivia gets a phone call from Hannah again and this time she she ignores it and this causes Hannah to go crazy and she decides to take matters into her own hands and to steal the crown herself. Olivia spots a strange newspaper page on the top of the fireplace and on it is a picture of Mayor Kunt getting crowned as the Winter Queen 30 years prior but Olivia takes a closer look and is surprised to see a mysterious figure behind Miss Mayor Kunt. That's her sister, Marianne. She used to write for the local paper but Nobody ever read her articles. Nobody ever knew what happened to her. Hmm, I wonder if that's going to be a big plot point later on in the story. So the next Winter Ball challenge is to decorate a Christmas tree, but our queens don't even have a tree, so they steal one from the local hospital. They decorate it with nasty stuff that they can find on the street, but they realize that they don't even have a tree topper. So they improvise by having Jane stand behind the tree, and she makes like a star shape, and she sings like a parody version of Ave Maria. And for some reason, even though this is literally 
quite clearly the shittest tree in the competition, they win this challenge too, which sounds like riggery to me, but whatever. So while all this celebrating is happening in the inn, Delia Von White Woman hires a private investigator to go track down Olivia and dig up some dirt on her that they can use to get her disqualified from the competition. So the private investigator puts on a disguise and breaks in to Olivia's room and finds a draft article that she had written and she had like shit talked all of her teammates even though she didn't feel that way but she felt the pressure to, to write it. It's like it's, it's stupid again, but that's just the company line at this point. So now we're at the penultimate challenge of the Winter Ball. And in this challenge, the groups have to make a Christmas dish, which will impress Mayor Kunt. But as you are probably expecting, the downtown broads end up winning this challenge, tying them with Kitten Hill Court going into the final challenge. But Delia Von White Woman decides that now is the perfect time to expose Olivia slash Maggie Zine and tell everyone that she's a reporter. So then she reads out this draft expose article where Olivia had badmouthed all of her teammates and friends. And believe it or not, this puts Olivia in a really good position because no one actually believes Delia Von White Woman. They all go towards Olivia being like, hey magazine, is this actually true? Did you actually do this? So if Olivia wanted to actually like do the smart thing here and make sure that her friends in does not get destroyed and that all of her friends aren't homeless, as she would just shut the fuck up and be like, hey, it's actually not true. Uh, all of this is lies and Delia is just trying to create a smear campaign to get us knocked out. It's not true at all. Come clean after you win the winter ball. Like the final challenge was the next day. Like just shut the fuck up for a day and then you're fine. But no, Olivia decides to um, just, just go off of vibes and to just reveal that all of this is fake. And she gets her entire team eliminated from the competition. Great job, Olivia. That was a really smart decision. You're such a good person. <laughs> and while all of this is happening, it turns out that Hannah Contour had snuck into the Tuckahoe Bank and had stolen the crown. Good for her. Good for you. Good for it. We love supporting women. We support women. Olivia is rejected by her team, obviously, because she made them homeless. Still, I'm not over that. And she now waits for her bus back to New York City. But then suddenly, this ethereal bus pulls up with Latrice inside. It kind of looks like the transit bus from Cod Zombies, which I'm really into. So it turns out that Latrice is the spirit of Christmas and she brings Olivia back to her childhood. And we're shown that Hannah seems to be a really overbearing and tough mother who guilted Olivia into working every day, all day long, even on Christmas. And when she sees how tirelessly she worked, Olivia realizes that there's more to life than just work. Olivia wakes up to realize that this entire sequence was just a dream, which is a really great twist. Thank you so much, writers for that really gripping and compelling storytelling. So Olivia's real bus pulls up this time, but she realizes that she's had a change of heart and she sprints back into town to right her wrongs. She bursts into the inn's bar to find the downtown broads packing their things. The gang isn't happy to see her, obviously, uh, because she made them homeless. But Olivia presents them with a loophole that she thinks will get them back into the competition. And that loophole is, is that they were eliminated under the leadership of Maggie Zine, but Maggie Zine doesn't exist, which means that Olivia can still compete because Olivia is real and Maggie Zine is not. It's the most contrived, bullshitty solution for this final act. Like the equivalent is on Drag Race, if. RuPaul had eliminated Trixie Mattel and he was like, sorry, Trixie Mattel, you gotta hit it. I don't like you anymore. You did bad in the challenge, go. And then Trixie was like, okay, peace out, I'm gonna leave. And then she leaves, but then she comes back the next episode being like, uh, what are you talking about? You eliminated Trixie Mattel. My real government name is Brian Furcus, so I'm still allowed to compete in the competition. Like, no, that's not how it fucking works. Like, like this, ooh, ooh. So the group is surprisingly receptive to the plan, but they just can't get over their butthurt feelings of Olivia betraying them and lying to them. So Olivia gives them this big emotional speech about how she has no family or friends in her life, but now she has both with these people, and they're like her chosen family, which is really lovely. Wow, that's so heartfelt. Felt. Anyway, they all hug and make up and we get on to the final challenge of the winter ball. Just when the talent show is about to wrap up, the downtown broads take the stage, surprising everyone in the audience with a performance of an original song that they somehow written, recorded, and produced all in this 
like three hours that they had to get to the to the winter ball. So everyone in the crowd loves their performance, which makes them not even question the legitimacy of Olivia being in the competition again, and even the entire group being in the competition. They were all disqualified yesterday, but everyone has forgotten about that since then. But before Mayor Koontz can announce the winner of the winter ball, Big Russ interrupts announcing that the winter crown has been stolen. Initially, everyone suspects Olivia, but Olivia puts two and two together and realizes that it was Hannah Contour this entire time. This twist probably would have worked better if they didn't show us the scene of Hannah Contour breaking in and stealing the crown. Um, but who am I to question this masterpiece of a movie? But Olivia puts another two and two together, which if we do the match, that means she has like four twos. She figures out that Hannah Contour is actually Mayor Kuntz's long lost sister from the newspaper. A lot is happening here. <laughs> Hannah gives her villain monologue and she basically tells everyone that her print business is actually going under and that she wants to steal this winter crown so that she can sell it to someone and, and she can save her business. Um, yeah. That's, that's her reasoning. Hannah also reveals that the reason that she ran away when she was a kid was because her and Mayor Kunt, who are sisters, had done the winter ball together and they won. And Mayor Kunt told Hannah to put the crown on her head. But when Hannah lifted up the crown, her corset came undone and it revealed to everyone that she was nine months pregnant. <sighs> So then a getaway helicopter comes in for Hannah and she decides to steal the crown and to climb up the Christmas tree so she can reach the helicopter. Why doesn't the helicopter just land and she can get in? It's, it's stone question. Olivia climbs up after her and they wrestle on the tree for the crown. And then Hannah drops another twist. Aren't you curious about my pregnancy all those years ago? I gave birth to you on the steps of God. Olivia slaps Hannah and the crown falls to the ground. Big Russ saves it and the day is saved. But wait, we have to announce the winner of the fucking Winter Ball. And the winner of the Winter Ball is the Kitten Heel Court people. And they win and then Adelia Von White Woman is like, Hey guys, I'm actually going to demolish your thing anyway. Uh, sorry, I have the power now that I have the crown because somehow that the winning the ball means that you can destroy anyone's property. But then everyone in the audience is like, Hey, we actually really like that you saved the crown. So we're all going to donate to make sure that you can pay your loan so they can't demolish uh, your inn anymore. And that's exactly what happens. A little nice a fairy tale ending with a bow. They all celebrate that night. Everyone gets their own crown, Mean Girl style. But then Mayor Kunt and Hannah show up. Turns out Hannah was in a helicopter crash and she, you know, introspected and she realized that she actually wants to be a mother again. So she asks Olivia if she can be her mother. Um, and then Olivia's like, no, that's kind of weird. Like, we're going to take a while to get there. And then Hannah's like, yeah, that's cool, but let's just celebrate anyway. And then as a big final fuck you to the audience, RuPaul says, no. Let the music play! Oh! Mama, this is garbage. I made fun of this film because that's a fun thing to do. Uh, but this film is not as bad as I probably made it out to seem. Is it good? No, but you shouldn't really be expecting a great film. I did laugh a decent bit when watching it. And not even just in like a laughing at it way. But a lot of the jokes did land for me, which I was very surprised about because I did not expect that. You know, I wouldn't be getting like a streaming service just so you can watch this film. If you already have like WoW Presents Plus, and you want something for the Christmas, put it on. See how you get on with it. It's not that bad. But yeah, so that's my overall thoughts on The Bitch Who Stole Christmas. Thank you so much for watching. And please subscribe and like and comment as it really helps out my channel. And I would really appreciate it. I have a Twitter. I have an Instagram. I have a TikTok. If you want to go follow me over there, please do. But other than that, have a great holiday season, everybody. And I'll see you in the new year. Goodbye.